Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War, Warm 2, quick match gameplay. This time around we are on Death Pass playing as the Vampire Coast against the Force of the Dawi. And for this matchup we are running an Adeptus Titanicus build. You can see our wonderful Titans here all lined up. Double Decker Vex Colossi, Count Noctilus mounted on a Colossus as well. He does have some solid kit, of course, Moondial Wraith Storm, Evocation of the Hack, Ray's Dead, and um, an Arcane Conduit, so he's well kitted out. And finally, we do have the Gallows Giant with its crazy flamethrower. So I really wanted to try uh, try this sort of crazy build out. Um, I'm personally a huge fan of 40k, and just seeing the Titans it's, it makes me hope that we're going to get uh, Total War Warhammer 40k game at some point, because I'd just love to see some Titans in action. But regardless, a whole lineup of Necrofex Colossi here in the back make up the vast majority of our army. For the front line, it is a bunch of zombie pirate deckhands, uh, so these guys might as well be our servitors. <laughs> we do have six units of them, as well as the Titus Skjold here. Three units of Felbats up in the sky, and then over here on the flank, we do have a single bloated corpse who is hoping to try out against the Sunties. Elsewhere for my opponent, well, he's gone with a bit of a bunker build. Two flame cannons to clear away chaff, three cannons, so a whole bunch of anti-large firepower uh, with, of course, their monstrous AP. But actually, never mind, it's actually three flame cannons and two cannons, so uh, still very crazy AP firepower and a lot of um, mob melting. Uh, though definitely perhaps a bit too much money spent on that for how many little I brought. A front line of Dwarf Warriors as well as a three units of Quarlers. So these guys, um, although it looks, the Necrofex Colossi might look big and intimidating, it is important to keep in mind they only have 75 armor and they are pretty big and easy to target, so the Quarlers can actually do a lot of work. Finally, there's a Rune Lord here on foot with full kit. He does have his Rune of Oath and Steel, he's got Master Rune of Wrath and Ruin, Master Rune of Negation, uh, Rune of Hearth and, Stone, or Hearth and Home, Forge Fire, and Master Rune of Grungni. Personally, I don't really think Forge Fire is necessary, but hey, you can make it work. Finally, there's Unit of Slayers out on the flank, but otherwise, you know, pretty simple build, pretty straightforward. Uh, definitely very heavy on the DACA. But a lot of splash, a lot of it was invested in dealing with mobs that... Well, I have a lot of chaff. It's just that it's very cheap chaff. These guys all cost 300 a pop. The type of school is 450. Uh, bats obviously will get wrecked pretty fast if they land, but um, you know they're bats, so they they're pretty safe from the flame cannons. Regardless, my opponent is wheeling his cannons up a bit to try to get some pot shots in on my Necrofix Colossi, who will be firing off as they approach. Uh, one of the unfortunate things about the Gal's Giant is actually that its damage numbers, while they look nuts on paper, are not actually that good. Uh, so these these numbers are basically fake news. It does not do 7,000 of burst. It does actually, and it doesn't only have four ammo. It has like 20 ammo or something, uh, in my ex in opinion. And it really doesn't do that much damage. Uh, you want, basically want this guy in melee because he has monstrous melee stats, much better than normal Gale's giant with 25 bonus or some infantry. Unfortunately for these quarrelers, you can see they're getting pounded by that crossfire. Uh, the cannons and the flame cannons also not having the best time of it. Um, obviously, we're basically able to just fire on the move, fire while advancing. A flame cannon does go down there. Uh, but we really need to take these cannons offline and you know, try to whittle down the quarrelers a bit. You see my opponent there using up some of his effort to try to shoot down the Gallows Giant, which is good because it's, although it is the more expensive unit, um, it is ironically perhaps the less less important unit than Necrofex Colossi with their cannons, which we really want to get good value out of. That said, my opponent is definitely whittling them down. You can see the cannons having an easy time hitting. Uh, they are dwarf artillery pieces after all, so pretty accurate. Uh, but you can see some cannonballs there scything through these tight packed troops, uh, which is very beneficial for me. My opponent being so clumped up means I'm getting a huge value on uh, those cannonballs. You can see these guys all up to 29 kills and count Noctos, 44 on this Colossus over there, and 11 on that one. So definitely getting some huge value. And now we're going to commit the bats. Um, trying to shut down some of these artillery pieces. Perhaps I should have committed them against the cannon, try to take them offline, but uh, I do not. And unfortunately, these bats over here are getting wrecked by Slayers, but, you know, we're able to put these Flame Cannons down. We're definitely getting some value. And we do obviously have Invocation of the Hack, so th although this might look bad for, say, the Gallows Giant, we can always heal him up a good bit uh, to put him back into commission. Unfortunately, I've kind of forgotten my, about my Bloated Corpse, and he's just sitting around there looking forlorn and sad and uh, not really doing anything. My opponent has also not noticed him, so ideally I could just swing him around from the flank, but, uh, hey, I forgot about him, so what can you do? Bats are shutting down the artillery piece, though, taking this flame cannon offline. It's got almost no crew left anyway. This cannon over here is losing a gun. That's one of the cool things about Necrovex Colossi. Um, they don't do quite as much damage as, say, cannon battery. They don't, they don't have that much firepower. Uh, if we look at their per shot, or that is actually the Gallus Giant, but if we look at the per shot damage of these guys, it's, one, it's only about 170. It's 170 on these guys, uh, as opposed to cannon, which is like 400. Uh, perhaps, I, unless I'm much mistaken. 
I think it's about 400. Yeah, a little over 400. So it's nowhere near, but you get much better spread, so you get more value out of your projectiles. Against most targets that aren't essentially just single large single models, you're going to get more damage out of the uh, of, out of these guys and out of the, the Necroflex Colossi, and they don't lose guns, so they can just keep firing, keep pounding away, and you don't have to worry about running out of uh, running out of guns and not having as much DPS as you uh, are having less ammo available, essentially. But the Flame Cannons are doing their work. You can see already up to 34 kills here, 36. Even this Flame Cannon over here is going to get up and running and start doing some work. Uh, the Gals Giant really pounded into Oblivion here, so what I'm going to do is sick him on these Quarrelers, try and pursue them in melee. And these bats are coming back for another go. I managed to extricate them, so they're going to dive in here. Trying to shut down this cannon, take it offline. And we are taking the Gals Giant here into melee. Unfortunately, you can't fire on the move, which sucks, but I really can't afford to have him shooting on the move right now. I need him in melee. Uh, we do hit him with an invocation neck. And see, he's actually doing a lot of damage here in close quarters. These Quarrels are losing a lot of HP. Um, just, getting, just getting slapped and smashed there. Elsewhere, the rest of the Necrofax Colossi Goon Squad, they're just advancing f full speed ahead here, firing away as they close the distance. You can see we're overwhelming these Dwarf Warriors, and the kill counts are pretty monstrous. Uh, the kill counts in the 50s for some of these guys, over 40 over there. Uh, definitely getting some good value, and unfortunately that corpse just sitting there doing nothing. But uh, our summons are coming down to block off these Slayers. You can see the Slayers, um, you know, they'll mulch through cheap chaff, but they are going to take immense damage. They've only got 32 melee events against these guys. Oh, these are actually, yeah, they've only got um, 10 melee attack. So, yeah, probably not doing that much, but uh, hey, they're, they're doing their best. They'll do some work against the Slayers regardless, just because there's so many of them. And, uh, why do these guys have such low melee stats? Uh, it looks like the summoned variants actually have a far less inferior melee stats uh, to the normal variant, which I did not realize. You can see melee attack 10 and 8 compared to the melee attack of 17 and 15 over here. So that's quite a difference. But regardless, they're going to do some damage. You can see my opponent's Rune Lord here committing it to melee, which, you know, he'll, he'll do great against Cheap Chaff, but it's just not too important for me. In the meantime, over here, the Gallows Giant's still running amok, still pressuring these Quarrelers, and uh, now this Gallop Necrofist Colossus is going to tie down these Quarrelers, and my opponent in some deep trouble here. Definitely having a hard time protecting his back line. Uh, this Necrofax over here pushing through the Slayer line, just ignoring the Slayers, pushing into the artillery pieces, trying to take them offline, and we're just getting con a constant stream of summons from Count Noctilus. Uh, this Gallows Giant here is really struggling. But, you know, 24 kills, he's doing some good work, able to rat off those quarrelers. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just getting huge value here. My opponent getting taken offline one gun at a time. Uh, and there's not enough troops. There's only one Slayer, really, at this point, able to really threaten the uh, Giants. The Flame Cannons aren't really a huge threat to him. The gun crews are offline. The cannons are all routed or destroyed. And now we are going to hit the Gal Giant with another Invocation of the Hex, just healing him off. And the Titans stride to war. You can see the, uh, the Adeptus Titanic is here, not... Not getting taken down easily, and just stomping all over these troops. So uh, the Admech would be proud. Tech priests would definitely uh, be smiling here. But uh, Flame Cannon is being pounded into dust. Unfortunately, like I said, I completely forgot about the Blood Corpse here. He's sitting there looking all sad. But um, the Gallows Giants just keep marching, and of course they can keep firing as they're moving. Um, over here, the Gallows Giant pursuing these Dwarf Warriors off the map, which perhaps I shouldn't have done. I probably should have taken him over here to do those Quarrelers. Uh, but you know, Noctilus is still very healthy. Uh, over here, this guy has actually dropped his pooped out his zombie pirate deckhands because he's taking so much damage. Um, but you know, it's a complete route. <laughs> Necrovex uh, Necrovex claws I still jumping around. Uh, they got seven H seven ammo there, nine ammo there. This guy got eleven. So uh, have, this guy's basically hasn't fired this entire game. It's just been in close quarters. And at this point, it's basically just a grind fest as I'm shrugging off my opponent's uh, remaining troops, tying down these last handful of slayers. You can see, you know, they're up to like 80 kills, but it's against chaff, so it just doesn't matter. This is even summon chaff, so these guys I care even less about. And we're getting more summons in, we're just overwhelming these cannons. My opponent's been trying to maneuver with these cannons around, and uh, it's just not working out. At this point, it's going to be a Pyrrhic victory for the forces of Noctilus. So essentially, all the chaff got wiped. I completely forgot about the Bloated Corpse, so I know some of you guys were no doubt hoping to see... A uh, huge explosion. Unfortunately, we just didn't get that this game. It just didn't work out. But, uh, you know, the Necrofex Colossi are great. They can do their... I love the fact that they're essentially a cannon battery against most units. Now, obviously, they're not great against single hot targets. So do keep that in mind. Uh, when you see this monstrous scything power against infantry, uh, do keep in mind that you're not going to get that performance uh, against... Uh, you're not going to get that performance against um, big single targets. Because, one, a lot of your shots might miss... 
And two, you're just not hitting with it. The actual damage across the whole volley is not that high. Uh, but regardless, you get huge amounts of kills. You can see 79, 88, 90 against dwarves. It's really not bad, and we were really able to disable important targets like whirlers early on, the, fl the flame cannons, the cannons. Uh, flame cannons got a huge value because I didn't really shut them down, but, you know, who cares? It, it's all chaff, so I don't really care about any of these troops. Um, and we're just able to sort of attrition our way through my opponent's line and break troops constantly and just force that route. Uh, for my opponent's build, definitely way too much investment in the flame cannons, in my opinion. I'm like, you can try. I, I'm certain it's not a terrible unit, but I would rather. I think it's you're better off bringing a lot of cannons and coilers. Um, you do need something to win the artillery duel, I think, because as Dawi, unlike as a lot of other factions, you're not going to be able to push into close quarters effectively. You could do, a, and I actually think you could do a rush build here as well. But I'm not like if you're trying to do campy sort of defensive style, I bring a bunch of cannons, back them up with coilers or rangers or bugman's rangers. I think there's a dip, bunch of different ways you could take it there. Um, and I'd actually go pretty light on the infantry. You can go cheap. You can go just a handful of dwarf warriors, I think. Maybe bring like you know slayers or two. Uh, and I think you should be fine. Like I, if I was doing a build here, and unfortunately I had to think because I got I had mods in the background. It's now saying none of my uh, things are the correct version. But uh, we go into customs real quick, and we try to build a dwarf build against. We'll sort of model off my opponent's build there. Uh, you could bring a rune lord. I actually think bringing an anvil of doom is not necessarily bad idea. There are some magical attacks and effects that you might be seeing from your opponent. Uh, I would bring... Yeah, immunity psychology is not bad. I would drop forge fire. Um, because most of your opponent's shooting, that's going to... Most of your opponent's damage, honestly, that's going to come against you is going to be AP. I wouldn't bother with Master of Devotion Steel. I think that's a waste. Uh, Rune of Wrath and Ruin, it's good for control. I'd bring that. Uh, Master of Negation, never bad. Uh, Master of Ruin, definitely pretty solid. So, you know, get that. Get that sort of kit. And then... For the rest of the build, now, for the back line, I'd probably bring like three cannons. Let's say maybe four cannons. I think that's decent. A front line can be some miners with blasting charges. Let's say if we could go super heavy on miners with blasting charges, but let's say we don't want to. We can bring like some dwarf warriors there. You know, have, a, have an okay holding force. Uh, and we still have a lot of money left over. So do keep that. You could do something like gyros if you want to be risky, but I personally wouldn't recommend that. I think, um, really, you'd be best off probably with Bugman's Rangers. Um... If you don't feel comfortable with Bungman's Rangers, you can just bring normal Rangers or bring something cheaper like Whirlers. Uh, but you could do something like that, uh, Bungman's Rangers, or you could go really cheap um, and bring like. Uh, you could do Whirlers or Rangers. It doesn't really matter. It's just that Rangers will be safe from enemy shooting early on, so you won't take huge losses, which is why I prefer Rangers in this situation. But you can do like triple Ranger, five Rangers there, and then bring two Slayers. And that's a decent build, in my opinion. You can, you've can you got some good counters to basically everything. If your opponent brings a bunch of Necrofex Colossi like that, you can just focus the hell out of them with your cannons. Um, and then as they close into melee, you can slow them down, hit them with Slayers. You can scatter with your Rangers. Rangers are fast enough to kite zombies more efficiently. Stuff like that. That's, that's kind of my take on the situation. That's how I'd probably go right about dealing with it. Uh, but regardless, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. hope you enjoyed some Titan gameplay. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below to keep up with additional content. If you have any comments, any criticism, any questions, as usual, do not hesitate to post them. I'll do my best, best to respond as soon as I can. Um, I do thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.